Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, I am stoked you guys are here. Today, I'm going to kind of expand on a video I think that posted yesterday where I picked out five of my top USA made knives. And they kind of, when I went back and looked at it, they kind of were more the premium knives. So what I did is I didn't go through and pick the least expensive USA made, made knives I had. I picked the favorite USA made knives that I've got that are in that what I consider medium to sub premium, but right in there with some of the bench made's um, pricing. So anyway, hopefully you guys will find this enjoyable. If not, leave me a comment. Tell me you'd like to see the content go in a different direction. Give me suggestions. I can't promise I'll take them, but I'll sure consider them. If you guys are over on IG, you can connect with me via DM, or we can follow each other over there. I'm at jevans underscore knife addict life, which is my same handle over here on the YouTubes. And what I wanted to do right out of the gate real quickly is just thank the channel members. Thank you all very much. You guys make it possible for me to continue to do this at the velocity that I'm trying to do it with, and I appreciate that more than you know. Um, and that's why we have the member giveaways. One of the reasons that's not nearly enough thanks for what you guys do for the channel, but they're going to continue to ramp up. And if any of you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe to the channel and you're so inclined, hit that bell notification, the subscribe notification icon by it. Actually, the subscribe to the bell. You'll be notified when I release new content. You'll also really help the channel out, and I'd appreciate it. Starting with five knives, which really, they are going to be five knives, but there are a couple of variations of a couple of the knives, so let's not get caught up on the semantics of the actual digits. So, number five for a USA-made knife that I think punches way above its weight, and this is the first generation, the OG, first generation of the Hogue Decas. This is the 20CV Hogue Deca. These are the ones that were rumored to have a softer than optimal heat treat. Um, that could very well be accurate. I have used these knives. Um, I have sent these knives for a year. They lived with original goat as they were prototyping Gen 1 scales. So if any of you guys have picked up the original goat aluminum or titanium generation 1 DECA scales, you're welcome. I sent this knife to Marty. So he, well, both of these knives, because I didn't know if they were different, um, and then got a deal on some scales. So it was a win win. But the Hogue Deco was a great knife before it had the original goat scales, which are also 100% American made. So you've got American scales on an American knife. This knife I picked up at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. I picked them both up at the very same time. I want to say it was around 2021, and it was around Black Friday, right before 2022, and these were on sale for $114 a piece. So I picked the knives up at a very good deal. They did have the black uh, G10 scales, um, and then when original goat came out with their deca scales i reached out to marty a friend of mine who works there you know i'm his knife eclectic and said hey man are y'all doing anything with gen ones i know there's just a couple of different screws and he said well there are a couple of other differences we looked at it but it's not going to be something that's going to be easy for us to pull off and i said well what if i sent you the deca so you could use them as a template he's like man we're so busy i don't know how quickly we could get to him i was like listen marty I'm looking to buy scales. I'm not in a rush to get my decas back. I've got other knives. Long story short, a year rolled around. I got these knives sent back to me, and Marty had included some uh, just really killer, killer scales that have changed the entire dynamic. Not only was I away from these knives for a year, um, I'd kind of forgotten about them. I'd forgotten how good they were. Um, you know, I'm a can have kind of been when I do light carries, bug out type carries, but when these came back um, with these scale sets, they are taking the place or have taken the place of my bug outs. I mean, that's just the fact. They, they carry better. The clips I like better. Um, I love the look of this Horncliffe. I love the splatter he did on it, and I love the actual aggressiveness of that Horncliffe blaze, that Elishowitz blade. I think it's just a banger. 
And the clip point is just a traditional great clip point. I mean, it kind of gives me a vibe of a rat one meeting and mating with a bench maid that had a little something to do with the 940. Uh, it's got a nice swedge. It's got a very, very sharp tip. Both of these knives have great studs. They have great access locks that give you just enough protrusion to get a real good grip on them. Uh, they are just very nimble, wonderful little knives. So number five in the mid-range. Uh, so if we took these knives at $115 and added the $80, $85 scales, they're around $200, guys. But when I was looking through these knives, we're not going to find many that are going to be under that. So, you know, I think the Hogue Deck is a good buy. If it suits your jam, if it's kind of your style, I would definitely recommend it. It's, uh, it, it's a great one. And I'm sure the comments are going to alight with hate with this one here. This was my first grail. I'll take away the small one because I said if we've got some that have a smaller brother, I want to showcase them too because some people like a smaller knife. And I think the minis and the cases that I'm going to portray minis are as good as the originals. But the Osborne 940 um, was a knife that I had always wanted when I first got into knives. It was out of my reach. It was something I didn't think I could afford. It was something that I kind of worked up to by not buying certain other knives. And then I ordered it, and it got lost in the mail for about a month and a half, which was a trip. It was one that I was just about to get replaced, and it showed up. This guy is in 20CV, or S30V, excuse me. It is the Osborne design, which the biggest complaint that I hear about bug outs is they don't cut very well. They do have a much thicker grind because they're designed kind of as a multi-purpose knife, if I'm mistaken. Um... And I could very well be mistaken, so y'all correct me in the comments. But our, uh, our man who designed it was a rancher and used this to do everything from cleaning out horse hoofs to doing other um, tools or tasks around the ranch that weren't just cutting related. So it is a thicker blade. It is a thicker grind. But for me, it fits a spot in my collection where nothing will replace a 940. If I'm going to go out and I'm going to be, I don't know, shooting, or I'm going to go out and I'm going to be in the woods for a little while, and I might be making a fire, but I'm not sure, and I don't have a big pack on, and I'm not doing anything like that, I will carry my 940 because I know that this knife, A, carries very, very well in my pocket. It's almost invisible. I know if I don't need the big one, the smaller one's going to be just as meaty, just as beefy, and I know they can do pretty much anything that I would call on them to do, right? They're great knives. I know they're kind of polarizing. A lot of people think they're a dumb design. They don't make sense. But for me, everything I've put them through, which has been mainly urban EDC tasks, we've heard the story, opening packages, cutting things around the house, um, cutting twine, cutting paracord, taking them on camping trips when I'm setting up my hammock and making all those cuts. And guys, I love the 940. I can't take anything about it. It's an Osborne design. I think it's a time-tested design, and it's one that I can highly recommend, and I think it's definitely one of my top five in that mid-range made in the USA knives. So then we're going to go to one that a lot of people ask me, John, what do you think about the Spider Co. 3, the Paramilitary 3? I had a Paramilitary 3 because I'm a smaller guy, but I've got medium to large size hands. Absolutely hated it, traded it. I don't know why. Um, I've thought about getting another one. I've actually been talking to a brother in the community about possibly trading for one. But for me, the paramilitary two, and I don't carry big knives, and I know this is a larger knife, but it does not feel like a large knife to me. It carries very small or very medium. It gives me that extra blade length. It doesn't feel as squatty in my hand as the pair three. I think it's just a, as far as Spyderco's designs go, I think the pair two is probably as good as it gets. This is actually the first Spyderco, this one right here, that I bought. Actually, a Dragonfly I bought first. And this came well before my 940. But this is one I picked up at um, St. Nick's Knives. This is the S110V. I had no idea what I was doing, guys. I was buying my first, you know, over $200 or over $180 knife at the time. 
and I can tell you I've cut with it. I have never put it on a strop. I've never sharpened it. And that S110V is the bomb, if I could actually make it cut and not start off with a choil. So very, very, very slicey. And so this thus started my infatuation with the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. And I had them, of course, in purple G10. I only had one. And then I decided, gosh, I think I want to try to do a, a mod on this or do a scale swap. What could, I, what could I do to this knife to make it a little different? And I was, I've still got the purple scales. I've got the original hardware because I one day may want to sell this knife. Somebody that is interested in buying this knife is probably going to want the original stuff. So we can take it back to an original. But I ordered these, um, I want to say they're uh, sharp dress scales, these um, boa scales, carbon, my, or they're my carta. My carta python or i forget the actual pattern but they're like hardest scales and i got them in put them on they changed the look they changed the feel of the knife i really was seeing spider coats as more than just a great design that fit my hand that fit my needs but it was kind of a canvas that i could do a lot of different things with so i went on etsy and i found some kind of this bronze clip this uh, lynch clip and then some bronze hardware titanium hardware just to make it look a little bit more um modded or custom if you want to say and that opened up pandora's box so that spider co led me to having a friend a to z edc pick up a Tonto when we were up in uh, North Georgia, in the mountains of Georgia. And after I played with that knife, I realized it had everything I loved about the PM2 in terms of the ergos, the way it felt, the way it cut. But with the blade being heavier, it just had a totally different style. So I was working with one of our brothers in the community, Keith the Knife Freak, who happened to have this particular variation inside, in, for sale he was getting rid of it and offered it to me it came just as you see it i haven't changed a thing on it it's got the alan putman um uh, contoured micarta scales that just have great great milling in there or um i don't know if you call that milling but you can talk see what i'm talking about texture and it's got the titanium hardware uh short carry lynch clip and then it's got the lanyard hole stopper which i really love to see it's got amazing action, and it's the Tonto, which really, once I picked up the Tonto to add to my drop point, let's get these where we can see them all. I don't get the same view you guys get. I had a chance to make a trade with, you can see by the Spyderco number there, this is from a Spyderco club. I had a chance to trade with OCD for EDC, Brother Justin, he had a I had a knife that he was interested in um, and he had a knife I was interested in I was very much interested in this cutlery shop CTS XHP um, Spyderco Warncliffe the paramilitary two in the Warncliffe because that would have kind of gotten me gotten me all the blade shapes and different blade steels the Tonto's just CPM S30V which is a great steel as far as I'm concerned but I look at all these as one knife because even though the blades are a little different, the actual carry profile, the ergonomics, the way it feels in my hand, yes, they might cut different materials differently because of the blade shapes and what they're designed more to do, where this will be more of a slurpy saver. Um, and then you've got your all around drop point here. But the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 cannot go in mentioned as one of the top five in my collection of USA made knives. Which brings us to number two. So number two are going to be these two little knives, which are not the Benchmade Griptilian. And I love the Benchmade Griptilian. However, I think the Hogue Deca, the Doug Ritter and Hogue collaboration, the RSK1, we'll look at the full size first, because that's really what it's about. It's about the knife, and just so you know, like the 945 and like... Um, the bug out and the mini bug out they make a mini of this knife too some people might want a smaller office knife that serves the same purpose with the same materials 
um, the same things that they like about the full size. And people like me might want one that they can put to work that's more of a bruiser. But the Ritter Hogue RSK is, I think, the best value per dollar that you can get for a USA made knife. The only downside, and I don't even know if it's a downside, I perceive it as a downside because I've had experiences there with shipping that were less than lovely, but they sell exclusively through KnifeWorks. The good news of that is you can always find one in stock, one in one variation. This knife's available now in MagnaCut. It's, mag it's available with G uh, graph uh, carbon fiber scales. This is an OG, which is in 20 CV. It has got very textured G10. I'm going to break out, even though we're not comparing this to Benchmade's, this is what you'd be looking at in terms of the texture on the G10 on a Benchmade Griptilian. It's very smooth. It's very slick. Um, this, on the other hand, is very deeply textured. It's got several different patterns, which they're not aggressive on your hand, but they really hold your hand into place well. You've got great access to the act lock, to the uh, bar lock here, um, the studs or the bar uh, knobs are very easy to reach. It's got really nice thick stu uh, studs that are not at all aggressive. You can get them from pretty much any angle, and this knife is just a beast. It fits my hand very well in the full size. It does have a lanyard loop, has a reversible clip. Um, it is stonewashed 20 CV, which we can continue to cut, but I assure you it is super slicey. And we'll save the other half for the little small Ritter Hogue, which is the same knife, just the mini. So again, if you're not looking for a full size knife, you want a medium or a medium size knife, the Ritter RSK. Mini is just a winner. I mean, both of these, I think, are beautifully done. I think the blade angles, the blade shape is super sexy. I like the tall, flat grind. I like the deep carry clip that you get from uh, Doug, Doug Ritter and his team. I like the fact that it's a clip that I don't have to change out. I like the fact that the springs they pick up from a different company and they're much stiffer the springs you can tell feel much stiffer now guys i've never broken an axis lock spring but you can hold and flip and close a hogue ritter hogue rsk1 next to a griptilian and you'll feel the difference too so coming in at number two top american knives that i can absolutely recommend for well under 200 dollars, right over 150 dollars now available in magna cut is the ritter hogue rsk1 which brings me to my number one usa made reasonably priced knife and yes it is the spyderco manix 2. the spyderco manix 2 to me is perfect in so many ways the thing that i did not love about it I was able to remedy with these USA made rock scale design scales. The thing that when this knife came to me, it was a fantastic knife. It was a knife center exclusive, black G10, CPM crew wear. I was just totally excited to get it. I'd been wanting another Spider Co. and crew wear because I'd gotten rid of one. Um, and I knew this knife was not only going to sharpen great, which I haven't had to touch it to a stone yet. But you don't even hear it go through the paper. It's got the PVD coated blade, and then it had the black G10 scales, which it wore for a while, and it was happy with those scales. Well, I was browsing the internet, and I came across Rock Scale Designs, and I saw that they had this pattern in what they call graphite carbon fiber um, available. They happen to be in stock, and they were linerless i.e. they allowed me to when i put them on i got to take off those thick jimpy liners that make this for me more now an urban edc knife because again guys i'm not in a situation where i need that heavy jimping necessarily and to me it just took down some of the comfort of the knife where by just removing those simple liners 
And having this titanium scale, this knife fits my hand perfectly. I think it punches over the, uh, the paramilitary too for me. It's a full-size knife. I would not need the, uh, the Manix 2 XL. That, would be, that knife's too big for me. But this knife is just perfect. I love the ball lock. It's a little bit different than the uh, compression lock in a lot of ways, but it's got really strong lockup. I think it's got very nice snap when it's deployed. And I'm just a huge fan of this knife, guys. And that is, again, the Spyderco Manix 2. And then we had the Ritterhoe RSK1. We had our Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Our Benchmade 940. Don't hate me. It's a great knife depending on how you're going to use it. And then we had the Hogue Deca. So guys, five what I consider to be fantastic USA made knives that you can still get in without going, going crazy money wise. And you can go to NAF sale, places like that, find them on the secondary really reasonably. You don't have to do scale jobs for them. Um, they're perfect with their scales. Um, I do that because I've got an affliction. I'm an addict, right? I do weird shit like that. But guys, thank you for watching the video. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for just watching my content. I'm humbled and I'm just very thankful. If you're so inclined and you've got just a second, I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button and that bell notification icon. Please look out for the guy or gal to your left. Please look out for the guy or gal to your right. Look out for each other. Go forward with love in your heart. Choose debate, not hate. I love you all. Peace.